Can I tell you, man, I need to oil this fucking chair. <sighs> yeah. I'm starting I, to get complaints on the internet about it. It just squeaks every time I move it. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, you could that's that's an easy fix though. Yeah, Unless it's just you it's throw... such an old chair. It's like this chair is from like the 50s, I think. Like it's absolutely ancient. Yeah. It's just like somehow found its way. I'd love to like be the fly on the wall for this chair's lifespan. Like, <laughs> but it sucks because it's like I'm sitting here and it's like this old chair can talk the stories it would tell, <laughs> the thoughts it's held. They I was there in the war. Seen. I was there in both wars. I was there in Vietnam. I saw the races become equal. I'm the chair. Like, yeah, it would be hilarious. I the chair is. <laughs> you think that's what it's saying? Like every time I move it back, like ah, youngins. Hey, Neil, welcome to the podcast. Youngins! <laughs> Your chair needs its own intro in the podcast. Yes. Just back and forth. Yes. People are so used to it now. They're just like, what is wrong with your chair? Kev has mentioned it twice. It's like, what is happening with your chair? And I have to play Wasteland 3 in this chair because it's closer to the keyboard. Yeah. Uh, and it's just like, it's just like, yeah, Phil, let's shoot him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like I got a fucking velociraptor behind me just like making the play calls. Like, what's that velocity? Yeah? You want me to kill the guy? All right, let's do it. Time to get your fix. It's a horrible gaming podcast. It's not good. It's not great. Horrible gaming podcast. It's not even what you would call fair. It's really not that good. Horrible gaming podcast. Hello, my name is Zachariah with Old Man Gaming, and for whatever reason, you have decided to tune into a horrible gaming podcast. Just a reminder. It's called a horrible gaming podcast. Horrible's right there in the title, guys. <laughs> We're gonna talk about that later, but I'm not alone. Neither, nor am I ever alone. With me is. Oh, oh man! I was trying to get a burp out before before it ended up <laughs> being my time to go, but it caught me in the throat. Uh, Neil, aka Tiny Wizard. Choking Again, on <laughs> just on pointing her. out this is a terrible <laughs> podcast just pointing that out again uh so before we get in to the show we got to do a couple of shout outs as we usually do if you're watching this on youtube bef- behind the fancy timestamps, you're seeing some fancy graphics i use a lot of stock graphics but if they're custom they come from mr mark bell and we thank him for that and as far as the theme song goes the theme song for this and all of the shows here at omg are provided by the man who makes the music my brother nick van siders we thank him for that <laughs> Horrible Gaming Podcast. That brings us to the top of the show. The most important segment, at least to us, that's fan traction. In this segment, we read your comments in all the places you provide them, and we respond to them. Sometimes we have a hot take, sometimes whatever. Uh, So we got some negativity last week, and look, I have said this repeatedly, Fan traction is gospel. I do not skip negative posts, and I won't skip negative posts until such time as we get too many posts to keep track of, which we definitely don't. We're small potatoes. So, with that said, I'm going to do the negativity right at at the beginning. And I have some things to say. And Neil, I'm going to give you a complete chance to talk right at the end, but I want to get through this. If you don't mind, sir, uh, just get this done. Right on ahead. All right. So, first I'm going to read the comments, then I'm going to respond, just in case these guys are listening. And I do hope they decided to tune in this week. So, first and foremost, I want to get with the ridiculous post we got on YouTube. Uh, Slugs and Snails, great, great name right there. No one cares about you saying the Atari VCS is, is a crap, is a crap. It's a best system and it's a must buy deal with it he got four likes for that grammar strewn nightmare 
We also got eight downvotes last week. And then we also got a Twitter comment, which I'm just going to read his comment, not my responses, because we had a, a spirited debate, shall we say. Uh, he said, listen to it. You don't, didn't even play it. You haven't even seen one in person. You are reviewing something and calling it a POS while laughing the entire time like it's a big joke. But the only joke is this horrible podcast. All right, here we go. Number one, yes, it's a horrible podcast. It's called a horrible podcast. Number two, and I cannot believe I have to explain this to grown adults with any sort of IQ, but this is a conversational podcast. A conversational podcast is where two or more people discuss media and popular topics in a certain genre. Ours is gaming. Reviews are where one or multiple people take a specific product and they look at it in an in-depth way. We did not review the Atari VCS. We did not say it was crap. Every other media outlet said it was crap. IGN said it was crap, and everybody else said it was crap. It wasn't us, guys. All we did was discuss the media topics about it. And I hate to tell you guys, I hate to tell you, but coming after us with our 274 subscribers and our 16 Twitter followers is not the battle. You want to convince somebody this is good, go take it up with IGN or every other outlet that reviewed that thing. Now, we have some thoughts on it. I think it doesn't look good. I have no interest in buying it, but I did not review it, nor am I going to review it, okay? And newsflash, gentlemen. You gave me 32 views on that podcast, which is a lot comparatively for us on YouTube. You also gave me eight downvotes, which I usually only get about three votes either way. So you guys are actually helping me. New yeah, that's right. You're helping us. So if you hate us so much and you don't care about us so much, skip over us. Don't comment. Don't hit anything. That's the way to hurt us. The only thing you do by commenting and by sharing your rage with our small time channel is make us bigger. So I want to say this very plainly and clearly. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback and your interaction with us because it makes us better. Okay? All right. Now, Neil, would you like to add anything to that? Eh, I mean, it's all opinion. Like I said, we didn't we didn't review it. Most certainly, we did not I review would it. Not be, I would not be I would not be spending bare minimum three hundred dollars on nope. that thing. Um, and obviously, we're too small to be sent something for free, right? Uh, to even do that in the first place. But mm -hmm. I mean, honestly. We have our opinion from what we heard, and they have their opinion. Now, I would be interested to see if all of those people who, you know, had those comments, how many of them actually have the VCS themselves. Right. But that's, you know, that's neither here nor there. It's all opinion. That's all it is, is opinion. I... Well, and if you want, if, to, if you want to come at us... If you want to if you want to leave a comment below saying, "Hey, just so you know, I actually have one. I think it's really cool." I would actually invite you on the show to talk about how cool it is. I would. And you can convince me I'm wrong. I'm totally fine. But the thing is is it's not even convincing me I'm wrong. I never said the VCS is like I never said I decided the VCS was shit. I said that everybody reviewed it and it looked like shit, which it's true. Everybody did review it, and they all said it was shit. So, yeah. I mean, if you want to give us constructive feedback, give us constructive feedback. I'm open to it. I, I welcome it. I love reading it. I love talking to you. Even that Arsenic Steel guy, who we haven't heard from in a while, his were at least put together a little bit better than this. Like, 
Come at us with real things. Don't just swear at us and tell us we're doing something we're not. I mean, at the same time, too, I mean, it's probably a very diehard Atari fan base. Yeah. That was, you know, the one saying that. And honestly, right. hey, man, we're we're sorry that the thing that you yes. like didn't turn out the way that everybody else, you know, wanted it to right. or anything like that. Uh, but, and if you like the VCS, enjoy it. Enjoy it. Play it. Yeah. I, we're not, again, we don't have any problem with that. But again, like I said, it's all opinion. I mean, yeah. if if somebody wants to get spicy about it, I go ahead. I don't <laughs> – I personally don't care. They're expressing themselves, and like you said, at the end of the day, one way or another, it's interaction with that right. podcast. Right, it so is. Uh, you know, and we've – We've gotten the negative stuff before. It it hasn't bothered me nearly as much as this. The reason this one bothered me as much as it did is because they said we were reviewing it. Well, we didn't review it. We never said we reviewed it. We never we never even alluded to us reviewing it. That that's what bothers me about that so much. You know, I think that's what's really getting me hot about this one. So <laughs> nothing else. Okay, I just want to make sure you were done. I mean, yeah, no, I mean that was about it. Okay, it, it didn't get under my skin that much. <laughs> yeah, I know, but in fairness, and I'm not trying to to denigrate what you guys, you or Phil Billy, contribute to the channel. I'm the guy who sees it all first and foremost. You know That's what I mean? True. Like That's I'm the guy true. who gets the notifications. I'm the guy who has to go through it. I'm the guy who has to prepare to it. I'm the guy who has to respond to it on Twitter. Like I am the guy who like and that's fine. Like like I said, you guys I'm not denigrating either one of what you guys contribute to to the process at all. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like at the end of the day, I started the channel. I'm the gatekeeper. You know what I mean? And it, it, I don't usually have that much of a problem with the negativity. I just hate it when people put words into my mouth and or tell us we're doing something we're not. We we didn't we didn't say the VCS. We didn't say we reviewed it. I would never spend three hundred dollars on a system that doesn't come with a controller. Uh, period. Regardless of whatever it does on the side, I just wouldn't. So. But that aside, like, we never reviewed it. We never even said we had been it. Like, I, I don't understand that. And I don't understand... I, do, I definitely don't understand why you pick us. And I think they pick us because we're smaller and they feel like they can win against us, which you can't. You can't win against anyone on the internet. That's the whole point of the internet. Nobody wins. True. That's it's, true. It's mutually assured destruction. That's all it is. Just everybody ends up angry at the end of the day. That's what the internet is. So, like, but That's I think my they... Day every day. Yeah, I think they pick us because of that, and it just gets a little bit irritating when they say we reviewed something, we didn't review something. We didn't. We didn't. We never even said we did. Never even said we did. Okay. So moving on to more positive things, right? Yep. So, uh, Jason, I have heard conflicting things about corporations and copyright. On one hand, I've been told repeatedly that a company has to aggressively defend its copyright or it can lose it. On the other hand, there's been many times where one company is being aggressive while a rival isn't. Like when Marvel went hard after City of Heroes while DC thought people trying to recreate their heroes was flattering and good PR. Yeah, I, uh, I always... sorry, the post wasn't done. <laughs> oh, sorry, there was a no, no, no. You're there. I yeah, you <laughs> I needed to click read more. Uh, it was my ah. bad. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't realize it was that long. Or when Disney went after Disney, or when Disney went after Disney sued a daycare or pre preschool or something over paintings of their characters on the walls, while someone else parentheses Warner Brothers stepped in and offered to let them use their characters and said personally I think copyright law needs to revert back to when they expired after X years parentheses and yeah I know that still technically the case that's still technically the case but Disney keeps lobbying for and being granted increases in time where it's at an insane number of years now so he's obviously referring to when we were talking about the whole uh, GoldenEye thing. 
I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. When when MGM shut down GoldenEye. So if nobody listened to the last episode or just decided to stop listening after we said three things, uh, we got into a subject where Far Cry 5, you have this level designer and somebody actually recreated the entirety of the N64 Golden Guy, GoldenEye game in Far Cry 5. It was awesome. And MGM shut it down, and I thought that was pretty stupid. I, I kind of see what he's going, where he's coming from on this. Like I see the whole like you have to defend it or lose it sort of situation. But at the same time, I just, I don't know. I don't feel like this was hurting anybody. So I don't know. I would, I would love to talk to a lawyer about it, like a copyright lawyer, a real copyright lawyer, and be like, hey, did MGM have to take this down or lose the rights to make that game or? Or could they have let it fly? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I always thought. Uh, I always thought with copyright, it's one of those things like when you have it, you have it. Uh, and then after a certain period of time, if that copyright expires, then it's just like anybody can swoop in and do whatever with it. Because I know that was a big thing. Still, kind of is a big thing in like retro gaming, the right. retro gaming space for like third-party wireless controllers i remember they made uh wireless super nintendo controllers and whatnot after right. the copyright runs out on it and i think uh or i think it's the same for patents as well well and i think um, we're talking about a couple of different things too because i copyright yeah. i've actually dealt with some copyright stuff because i i attempted to be a writer in my formative youth um and copyright actually works like the, as long as you can prove that an intellect with intellectual property anyway as long as you pr can prove that the intellectual property came from you in the first place it's yours period there are a couple of things that you can do to like uh help bolster that like you can actually pay $99 to send whatever piece of writing you have to the library of congress they store it there and then nobody can ever like dissuade you but if you have dated in print proof that you were the first person to create set said intellectual property it's yours period uh that's how that's how that copyright works there is trademark which is a lot different and i think that's a little bit more what jason is getting into because copyright and trademark kind of end up getting very merged when you get into these big corporations and big kind of conglomerates and that i don't know as much about you know what i mean yeah. Uh, but I think the patent stuff also falls in into that too. Like there's a when the patent runs out, everybody can use it sort of situation. Yeah, I'm not sure. That's that's outside of my areas of yeah. expertise. I would love to talk to a copyright lawyer. Like really love to pick a copyright lawyer's brain about like what does this like like how hard do they really have to fight about this? You know what I mean? I'd love right. to see that. I'd love to do that. Uh, Kev Too Tall then says the hate flows through the internet. I am sure he is referring to uh, the reaction to our video. Uh, it does. It does. Like I said, the internet, nobody wins. Everybody just goes home angry. So, like, if you're getting pissed at something on the internet, just play a video game. You know what I mean? Just step away, play a video game. It's not worth it. Uh, Kev then says, Neil, the reason why consoles are not truly modular is optimization. Every yeah. option creates another variant that has to be optimized for when building a game. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. I think, though, we are getting to the cusp where there might be a way to find a way around that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, he does have a good point with that. But then at the same time, if it was – that's basically like what PCs are, right. which is kind of the conversation that we had a little bit about that idea of a modular console anyways in right. that it's like a PC for the most part. Right. Um, because, you know, you have minimum – uh, specs that you want to have for your for your rig to be able to play certain games, right? Um, so, think it would fall something under under that banner, right? Right. Uh, let me see. And then he says, oh, man, "Man, the comment moved out of the wrong position." Oh, then Kev also says, "AR is the next big step." It's getting close to being a practical use in day-to-day -day life. Think about it. Iron Man's armor interface is AR. Yeah. Our phones will essentially become AR machines. 
And then he put a little cool guy emote there, which you're slick, Kev. You're slick. Everybody knows it. <laughs> That's why you're the official Secretary of Defense now, buddy. I'm surprised we didn't get a thank you comment, though. That's messed up. Messed up! I, know, I think he made a mention of it somewhere. He did make a mention Discord. on Discord. He did make a mention on Discord. I, I can't remember what he said, though, about it. Hold on. Let me see if I can't find it. Why not? What the fuck are we doing with our lives? Oh, there it is. Uh, my first action as Secretary of Defense is everyone must wear proper name badges. <laughs> a tiny wizard also... I get my own section in the names list. Yes. Yes, you do. You do. You are Secretary of Defense. Uh, filthy is the troll extraordinaire. And that is the way it works. And then we are the foundation. All right. Uh, so that's it for fan interaction, I think. Oh, no. There's one more thing. My brother actually informed me what it was that I forgot. And it was weird. <laughs> he just wants me to mention... King of Monsters, the King of Monsters game. We used to play that game all the time back in the day. It was originally a Neo Geo game, and then it came to like a Sega Genesis, I think, and I actually bought it because I love it. And basically, it's like a brawler. It's like a fighting game brawler, but yeah, so it's not like just 2D. You kind of move up and down, and you have a city, and you're, you pick a monster, and you fight each other in the city. It almost awesome. sounds like Rampage to some degree. It it was, but like think of Rampage like 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 it's not three dimensional, but more like you know how like Streets of Rage isn't three dimensional, but it kind of is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it was. Like it was like it was not three dimensional, but you could move around the city like that instead of it just being like condensed into like a side scroller like Rampage is. It it had that big wide open range, and you just fought each other through the buildings. I. The game was so much fun. We played a ton of it. A ton of it. It was great. And I think there's actually a King of Fighters style indie coming. A King of Monsters style indie game coming soon. I can't remember what it's called. but Alright. Uh, so, I don't know. So fan traction done. You want to move on to our first talking point? Sure. Horrible Gaming Podcast. All right, so this brings us to our first talking point, and the stupid just keeps on coming, uh, especially with e and and the stupid is back on EA at least. At least it's it's a company we all expect the stupid from, right? Oh yeah. So EA announces. So EA is absent. E even their play was absent from E3. There's nothing there. Uh, and now they've just announced that they're going to have an EA play, a uh, big showcase. And they're going to have it on July 22nd, EA Play Live. It's going to be a big one. Uh, and then they immediately say, we're not going to have anything about Dragon's Age or anything about Mass Effect there. Don't expect it anywhere. <laughs> then they say, even though we don't have those things, it's actually going to be four separate live events. So EA is just taking that, like, annoying online trailer dump formula and cranking it up to shit fuck because july 8th we're going to have the future of first person shootout shootouts that'll kick off this ea play series the series kicks off with an extensive discussion of two of our most exciting shooters apex legends and the just revealed battlefield 2042 then we have july 13th ea and I, I cannot believe I'm about to say this. Greater than sign 3S. Yes, that's right. They typed out the emoji for their fucking EA Play. So EA Hearts Independent Studios. And, he says, and it says, We love seeing innovation in the industry and we love partnering with studios who have that same passion. So we're devoted an entire spotlight to the vital role indies play in the industry. Then, July 19th, which is, what, two days before the actual EA play? They're going to have another show, which is just Madden. Just Madden. NFL 22, all, Madden All Access, scouting how the community is shaping Madden. Then, the day after that, Neil, the day after that, they're going to have another show that just says, more EA Sports exclamation point. And then the EA Live 
on the 22nd. Yeah. Um, <laughs> why? Why, though? Like, why? Why are you breaking... Not even just, like... If you were to put all of those together and to turn it into a normal-ass show, how much of that would actually, like, contribute to, like, a running time that would be any sort of informational and wind up being something that doesn't sound like it's just overinflated as... They could get maybe an hour out of a show tops. Maybe an hour and 15 if they want to go ahead and, like, you know, spend a little bit of time here and there on the things that they're showing off. Yeah. But that's... If they were to take that entire three, four shows and combine them all into the one standard show because that very last show i cannot imagine (laughs) what it is that they have to show anybody at all that is either not a retread or something that's just completely just like off the wall that's like whatever yeah like what what are they possibly gonna have left for for the for the 22nd like at that point like what well, are they possibly going to have left i mean they do say that like ea play is hosted by xavier woods from up up down down i am a huge up up down down fan i love that channel and i like xavier woods but i have no idea what they're going to like push by that point i mean you you'll have every sports game announced I'm sure you have a bunch of independents. I mean, I'm sure they'll hold something back, but like, is it enough for a full show or is it just going to be a retread of all four shows you've already seen? And then like unend one more thing. Well, this is actually one of my odds and ends, but because we're talking about it now, I mean, there's one thing. Yeah. Um, there are rumors floating around that, uh, I forget the, uh, I forget the developer that is working on it, rumored at least, but apparently they are rebooting Dead Space. Yeah, I saw that. That was actually on my odds and ends too. Yeah, well, I I only have two (laughs) odds and ends this week anyway. I don't have a ton either. Because it's only been a couple days since we recorded. Yes, again, we're back on Fridays, guys, so it's, it's kind of tricky because while Friday's seem to be better right now with Neil's work schedule to record on. Uh, Fridays are tough to always be free on, you know. So uh, we're on this Friday. Next Friday, (laughs) maybe. Who knows, you know. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, if they have Dead Space to show off, I mean, that's something that, that would be worth showing. But that is one single thing. Yeah. (laughs) So, I mean... Sure, yeah, yay, I guess. Outside of that, I, I still can't imagine what they would have. They've already said that, like you said, Dead Space, or not Dead Space, um, Dragon Age and Mass Effect aren't going to be there. Right. So, uh, unless they're blatantly lying to us, which has happened before, but I can't imagine that they have anything substantive to show off for Mass Effect. Um, maybe right. Dragon Age if they were lying to us. But right. what is the purpose of this show? I mean, I'm sure there's a what? Oh, there's going to be a Need for Speed in there somewhere. Yeah, definitely. there always is. Uh, I'm trying to think of other EA things that are just slapped in there. Maybe a Sims thing. Uh, right. I mean, what else? What else could there possibly be? Especially because they're yet. they're taking sports, which is half of what EA does anymore. <laughs> right. Sports. Right. Seriously. No, that's right. So, I, I mean, if they are showing all of that before they even get to the actual show, I mean, what it, this actual show can't be any longer than a half hour. There's no I, way, unless they're just re-showing uh, everything they showed. I have a theory as to what their end, end one more thing is going to be, though. Oh, what's that going to be? I, I, think, I think we're going to get a Titanfall. Okay. All right. Because Respawn... I, is under that umbrella. Uh, yeah. So it's kind of like, are we going to see... I mean, and it, I mean, a lot of people want that, even though it didn't sell well, the, the second one didn't sell well, and they've been kind of avoiding it. A lot of people want that. And I, we haven't heard a ton from Respawn lately. I mean, obviously they've got Apex, and they had Jedi Fallen Order, but have we heard anything else from Respawn since? Unless I'm missing something, which I could have, but... 
That's it, right? Yeah, God, I, I think so. Words. I mean, there's, there is, uh, I, I, they might have. I think they have one more Star Wars game in the pipeline before mm. that deal goes. I can't remember. Unless well, and Fallen the thing Order is, is, the last of it. I don't think EA is going to stop making Star Wars games. I don't think. No. I don't. I think. I think we're going to have a Battlefield Three, not a Battlefield. Sorry, uh, Battlefront. Battlefront. I think we're definitely going to have a Battlefront 3. I mean, Battlefront 2 was very controversial when launched, but they worked really hard to turn that game around. It has a good player base now, and though they've kind of they've announced that they're, you know, stopping, you know, regular updates to it, uh there's still a ton of people playing it. I feel like there's plenty that would be excited for a Battlefield 3. I'm sorry, Battlefront 3. I don't think that I don't. I don't think that Disney's necessarily going to take that away from them, and and we're going to see that. We're going to see a third one of that. Yeah, and I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't be completely surprised if they had one more, or had like a story DLC sort of update for uh, for Fallen Order. I mean, granted, I've not finished the game, so I'm not quite sure how it ends. But uh, I'm sure that they could put something else on that. Given they just put the next-gen update versions out of that game. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's something that's there. But you can only... I mean, a whole day being shown, showing off Madden, I could see that. I, it's beyond me, but there are some people who are crazy about Madden. You know, fine, yeah. cool, whatever. But, you know, wh what? They're going to have FIFA. Mm -hmm. They're going to have... The basketball. The basketball mm -hmm. game. I don't even know what. Like, a need for speed. But what is... My big question is, what is this big aversion to E3 now? Like... Yeah. Uh, this this is something that if they would have had they combined it all into one show had it half hour 45 minutes during mm -hmm. the quote unquote E3 period right i think that they would have gotten a lot more coverage on whatever it's going to be and they think that they're trying to take a a page out of sony's book and you know right. oh we're we're divested from this now this doesn't affect us anymore this doesn't concern us anymore we are better than than you know E3 so you're going to go take your ball and go home and have your own little event. Right. Well, you got to be super confident in what it is that you have to show because if if you aren't, if you just take this little tiny showing essentially, mm -hmm. spread it out over a long period of time, nobody's going to care. They're only going to tune in for certain parts of it. Like myself, the only one I'm really going to care about is that very last one that's the everything else, I guess, category. Right. I mean, and even that, I don't have high expectations for. Right. I, I mean, they have said that all of these are going to be like short, quick, like, like, uh, 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 like they're all going to be like 40 minutes or less. So that is an upside. They're not going to be like long winded two hour shows, you know? Yeah. Um, and I will say they do have a couple of things that uh, are kind of on the rise. So EA actually has knockout city, uh, the dodgeball game. And I know not a lot of our people play the dodgeball game. The dodgeball game is a big deal. Uh, it's it got a I think it got a nine out of ten on IGN and it has a huge player base. It actually turned out to be a really good competitive game. Uh, so, I mean, they're probably gonna talk about that. Uh, it actually now that I'm scrolling through it, it actually says that they're gonna talk about that on the <sighs> I Hearts Independence show. Um, <laughs> But and and then uh, they're actually going to do a panel with Jose Ferris, uh, <laughs> which will be interesting. I'm sure he'll say a bunch of fuck words uh, because that's his thing. <laughs> yeah. I tell you though, side note, man, I want to play It Takes Two with my wife so bad. I I want that to be uh, a prelude to divorce game. I I just it needs to go into Games Pass so that I can play that with her. Yeah, Kayla's been wanting to play that one too. 
Yeah, I watched... mentioned to me a couple times. Games, uh, Game Grumps did, like, half of it. And uh, I, I'm i like, this is... My wife would just be angry the whole time. This would be great TV. <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know. I... I I, there are some stuff that they have, but to spread it out over four days, even with like quick forty minute or under shows, it's just it's just not it's just not enough. It's not enough. I it almost feels like EA is trying to make their own E three. They're trying to make EA play their own E three. Like that's what that's what this feels like to me. It feels like Ah, they did a festival, we can do a festival. Even with the closeness of dates. Like, yeah, they're not day after day after day like E3 is, but July 8th, July 13th, that's five days. July 19th, which is, okay, that one's a little bit long. That's six days. But then next day, two days later. So, like, it, it almost feels like they're trying to make EA play like a faux E3. I don't know. Seems weird to me. Yeah, it seems very weird, and it, it, it's... I, I don't know. It seems ballsy, mm -hmm. just on the surface. Like, they they think that they have that much to show off. Yeah. To spread it out across multiple shows on multiple yeah. days. I mean, I don't know. I don't think it's going to land how they think it's going to land. Unless like, they, they're a unless big they company. Right, right. They're a big company, but they're not this big, you know? Like, I don't know, especially with coming out of a pandemic, you know? I mean, I don't know. I don't think there's anybody who could get away with that. I, I don't think there's well, anybody and that's what I'm who saying. could get away with doing that. Like, like, if I had to pick if I had to pick a company that could get away with it, EA would probably be top of my list, but the timing of this, like plus they took out two of their biggest franchises. So like like if if they had said if they had said we're gonna do five five shows uh, and that's gonna be EA play and you're gonna see Dragonborn and you're and not Dragonborn Dragon's Age you're gonna see Mass Effect you're gonna see all our properties okay maybe you could get me involved because you've got the sports side of things you've got an independent side of things and you've got a AAA side of things that are all very independent and different. But like you immediately said, two of your biggest franchises aren't going to be there in any in any capacity whatsoever. Like, I mean, yeah, are they in contention to be a company that could possibly pull this off? Yeah, do I think they can pull this off? Three days, you know, I'm sorry, three months after. I mean, the pandemic didn't end, but you know what I mean. It's coming down. Three months after that, like no, without their without two of their biggest hitters, no, they can't do this. They they can't. I don't know. I think it's gonna be weak sauce for f five days. Very much so. <clears throat> and I'm sick of the internet show thing anyway. Like, I'm okay with it being like once, twice a year, maybe three times. But I'm sick of having to like cover these shows once a month. Like once a month, we get some company decides to have their own mini showcase of some sort and we gotta get like so, like well i don't get excited anymore but we supposedly gotta oh they're gonna show us stuff and then we just see a bunch of shit and maybe one more game and then that's it you know what i mean i'm just sick of this i'm sick of this they all feel like they have to and it, it feels like schoolyard it feels like well he had a showcase so i gotta do a showcase well they had a showcase so i gotta do a showcase and it's just showcase after showcase after showcase it's just fucking annoying you know yeah that's and that's what it is yeah they nobody wants to be left out they don't want to like they think oh well what is everybody gonna think if we don't you know show right. off our stuff you don't have to show your stuff if you don't have anything to show and i right. feel like that's a lesson that all of the companies need to learn yeah. that if you don't have anything to show, you don't have to do anything. Just don't because people are asking right. and begging and pleading for information on something that you have to give it to them. Right. You don't have to acknowledge that shit exists. But, right. I mean, it all goes back to that never-ending hype train that every right. single company feeds off of. And I, I don't want to use this term because this term doesn't mean this but it's like fake news not fake news in the the main term but like fake news in the fact that like it is they are creating a story 
just for people. You know what I mean? They're just creating a, a thing. They're just they're not even giving you anything. Like every time we see these, it creates a news story. You know what I mean? Like like oh, yeah. here's a showcase. It's a news story. You create this news story. We show up. There's nothing there. I, I can't. I mean, how many times have we done this, Neil? How many times have we covered these? on this very podcast and every yes. time it's like oh they're going to do this next week what do we think's going to happen we have a couple of predictions we get there nothing happens we come back and we're like this was nothing this was nothing and it's just that endless hype train it's that endless train it's not fake news you see what i'm saying right like i'm not comparing yeah, no, it to the normal yeah, no it's I, like I it's, know what you yeah. yeah it sucks because you got to put those two words together and when you do it means something completely different but it's like it's 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 artificial news stories. That's artificial what it is. News. Manufactured yeah, news. They are manufacturing a story to put it in put it into the news cycle and it doesn't it doesn't mean anything. It's just so frustrating and I'm so sick of covering them. I'm so sick of it. Like I'm at the point where like Well, I'll catch I'll catch the shit. I'll catch the few trailers I don't need to see on YouTube later because this isn't worth my time. It's not worth me setting my time aside for it, you know? Right. I just feel like these companies need to reduce the amount of times they do this to make it special again, you know? Right, because that's the thing is it's not special anymore. There's no magic anymore. Right, and it's going to hurt them in the long run because even though it, it, it it's this constant flow, people have gotten – very tired and exhausted with that constant flow and nothing coming out of it so you need to like leave them with something and then let them think about it you know what i mean you can't just like keep shoveling the same gameplay footage into their faces and that's what these companies are doing is driving me nuts all right yeah i think we cover this you want to move on sure all right Horrible Gaming Podcast. Brings us to our second talking point. Neil has recently got some experience with the xCloud uh, via the Games Pass, and he did it through the through his phone, and I'm really excited to hear this experience because I've, I've never tried it out that way, So, and I don't know anybody who has. So, Neil, take it away, man. Great. Well, uh... A couple weeks ago, we had uh, Amazon Prime Day rolled around. That's our manufactured holiday where we celebrate consumerism and just buy things because reasons. <laughs> and uh, I wound up picking up the Razer Kishi. So if anybody doesn't know what that is, the Razer Kishi is a little controller thing that you slap onto your phone for the explicit use of Game Pass. Uh, I mean, it's compatible with other apps and other games too, but it's primarily marketed for uh, for use with uh, Game Pass with Project X Cloud. Um, so you pop the thing open and you just slap your phone in there, and the second that you plug your phone into it, it automatically prompts you to download Game Pass for your phone, <laughs> which is great. It's no, it, it gets you right into it, downloads hmm. it, installs it, say, hey, you're ready to go. So uh, I finally got to use uh, a, a game streaming a little bit, um, and it actually worked to some degree. Really? Uh, and not, definitely not like Stadia. Um, Especially on your was, internet, I'm surprised to hear that. I was expecting well, the opposite. Well, I, it's not perfect. <laughs> it's not perfect. Um, so uh, I did a test of my internet and I was sitting somewhere around 75 meg mm -hmm. uh, down I don't know what my up was I think my up was only somewhere around 10 okay. so it was not stellar but if you have good internet I think that this is this is a thing that you definitely need to get in on so I nice. tried three different games uh, varying demand and whatnot and i saw a lot of similarities between all of them but some differences too so um i actually jumped in the very first thing that i did was booted up halo 5 and jumped into multiplayer um and it was bizarre playing halo 5 on my phone and <laughs> handheld i will tell you 
Uh, it is about the size of a Nintendo Switch. So it's a very familiar feel. Mm -hmm. um, there's the, I did notice uh, a delay with every game that I played. There's like just that half second of yeah. lag whenever yeah. you have any sort of input. Um, and I did notice too that when I was connected to my Wi-Fi, depending on where I was and, this, and everything, it kind of fluctuated a lot. There were some points where I had a hitch to where I just froze up for two seconds mm. and then, you know, flew around the map oh. uh, as to what I was doing. Um, there were some times where the frame rate was good, but the resolution was bad. And there were other times where I had these crazy moments of clarity where it almost seemed like the game was running almost at 120 frames. So... It was very all over the place. Again, my internet is kind of iffy, <laughs> so uh, I did, uh, I, I did end up uh, then going downstairs. If anybody wants router. to know how iffy, check out Halo Infinite Road. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I did end up then booting up um, the Skyrim Legendary Edition. Oh, cool. On, yeah, and I sat directly next to the router for that one. And I was connected to my uh, my uh, 5 gigahertz connection on that, too. Because it does tell you that you want to get that sort of connection speed and you want to, you know, do it like you have the best connection that you possibly can. So right. loading that up, I had issues... Um, when I first loaded it up, I did have mods installed on the save file that I used. Uh -huh. So it threw up a warning saying that the mods wouldn't load. And then it corrupted. It said that my file was corrupted. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, then I had to back out completely. And that time it completely, when I restarted the game, it just decided to ignore the whole loading cycle for okay. some reason somehow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, whenever you get into Skyrim, when you load your save, how it just, like, shows a weapon or something, mm -hmm. and it's just kind of spinning there. It just, like, that wasn't a thing. It was just like, okay, yeah, I lied. You're in the game. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, with that, uh, it, it played a bit better, uh, but there are still those moments that, that hit you up. And it's any sort of loading that needs to happen, which is odd because the game is running on a server somewhere. Right. So it, there's you are not physically loading anything. It's just that information being sent to you. Right. So I thought it was really strange that those were the points that it was catching on. Hmm. Um, but I had a bit better of a time with something like that because, again, like with something like Halo... Um, it's Twitch. It's Twitch it's, based. Yeah, it's very, yeah, it's yeah. very much like you have to be precise. You have to react fast. Mm -hmm. um, so it didn't feel as good playing that. But um, with Skyrim, it definitely felt like something that it, it felt a bit better to play like that. Um, and then the final game that I had tried uh, in my little session was I just threw on Undertale. Okay. Uh, because it's super low demanding, anything like that. Uh, but the issue that I had with that was the fact that uh, there's there's some points in the game where you have to have very precise movement and very precisely timed movement. That delay screws you. <laughs> so, so basically from from what I experienced when I've been doing this so far... It is very much like something, at least for me, with my, A, my internet, and B, where it is right now in beta, because it is still in beta. It lets okay. you know very right. much that it is still in beta, um, and it even asks for feedback every single time you quit a game. Mm. Um, but from what I have experienced so far, it is nice. it is a nice thing to have for, like, oh, well, you know, there's something on that, the, like, I can't get the TV right now. And usually that's where the Switch would come in. You grab the Switch, it's like, well, I'll just play, you know, Smash Brothers or whatever mm -hmm. for a while because I don't have control of the TV right now. Well, now this also opens up the option of me being able to play Xbox. Um, 
there are some games that I wanted to try, but at the same time, given how it it worked out with the other games, it would be kind of pointless. Like uh-huh. Doom Eternal. I was okay. going to try to run Doom Eternal on there, but with being such a hyper fast paced game yeah. and being like a Twitch shooter too, I it would not have worked very well. Um, I almost feel like it, it kind of lends itself better to some of the more high-end strategy-based games like uh, yeah. you know, like Wasteland 3 or Darkest Dungeon, uh, stuff like that that's a little bit more turn-based. I feel like this would be better suited for because you're not worrying about that Twitch-based play. And that's and that's something, too, like to consider is... like. Uh, again, my internet, if my internet was better, I think I would have had a lot better time mm. with this. But like you said, those are the types of games that this is perfect for. And again, this is only going to get better from here. Mm-hmm. And we look at this, how how this is, and compare it to Stadia. And my, like I said, you I... You actually I, played I, both. <laughs> I, I played both now, and well, <laughs> technically, no, I barely even did anything on Stadia <laughs> because it was so convoluted. The connections were trash. When I did finally get something right. to load up, it didn't work very well. Um, I should have done a side-by-side, honestly, because Celeste was one game that is available on Game Pass to stream, um, and that's the one game that I tried playing when I played it on Stadia. Right. Uh, so it's, it is, I, I think that this is going to be huge going forward and especially getting something like this razor Kishi. Uh, I did buy at one point, uh, like one of those little controller clip things, but it's so convoluted. You have to sync your controller to the thing and, make sure that your controller even has Bluetooth because if I remember correctly, some of the older Xbox One controllers don't even have Bluetooth capability. Uh, and then once you sync your controller to the phone, it ignores your console, so you got to resync everything. This here, I just slap, slap my phone in it, and it's ready to go. It even has all the Xbox buttons, so whenever I'm plugged in on my home screen on my phone, I hit the Xbox button icon, it just pops right into Game Pass. Nice. No questions asked. So nice. Yeah, it's it's definitely something to to be looking forward to moving forward. And something that honestly I really I really want to get my internet <laughs> situation figured out because that's that's something that I could really see myself using a whole lot more. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun, honestly. That sounds uh it sounds better than I was expecting. I was expecting kind of a little shit on it actually. Yeah, I mean, like I say, it is it does have its drawbacks. Right, right. It's right. when you think about it objectively like, you know, what it is doing and especially the handicap of the data connection that I have in my home. Right. Like that is that is definitely a drawback, but it's something that could is definitely probably way better honestly i can't wait to take this thing with me on vacation to try different wi-fis and one wi-fi that i'm pretty sure actually has like fiber so we'll see how that fares okay yeah i'd love to i'd love to hear we'll have to reconvene about it after your vacation and just be like what uh what happened you know what i mean (laughs) yeah all right, well, you know, I think you covered it, man. That was really interesting. I like that. I, I don't have a lot to, like, counter or interesting to say. I, I do think that this is something that would be better for, like, a strategy or an exploration-style game. Like, I'd love to use this to play No Man's Sky. That would be a really cool game in this because you'd get that graphic fidelity and the lag wouldn't matter that much because you're not, like, Twitch fighting anything, you know? Right. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I I think I think you covered it really good, man. Let's move to let's move to odds and ends. Alrighty. Horrible gaming podcast. It's fucking fucking ridiculous. All right, uh, let's do odds and ends, man. Yeah, I've. I've only got one, so because I well, burned the dead space one, and the... I have more than that. I have more than okay. that. I have much. Well, more that's. Than that. That is good. All right. Going in. Three, two, one. 
All right, that brings us to our final segment of the show. We are still breaking from Horrible Arena. Maybe it'll come back after the 100th. We're not sure. Um, but uh, basically, this is odds and ends. What we do is we like to collect little news stories, uh, stories that maybe didn't deserve a talking point, but we still want to kind of like call them out, mention them on air, get you guys' feedback, uh, hear what you guys think about it. So, that being said... Uh, Neil only has one, but I have four. So, I think I'll I got just. Do you want to just do say, yours, yeah, and then I'll, I'll just, just do go mine. into it? Okay. All right. Do um, it. Do it. All right. Uh, so do this it. Is, it's do kind it. Kind of a smaller-ish one, but uh, Sony has bought Housemark. Uh, the Housemark. studio that's done Returnal and. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Some other some other games. So, I mean, there's that. They made that acquisition. What is really confusing, though, is seemingly from Sony's own, like, official channels, they had something queued up, too, for them having acquired Bluepoint as well. Mm. Um, but then they were very much like, no, that's not a thing. But the internet was like confused about it because <laughs> like it, it came out and they didn't really get a straight answer on it. I think it's finally been figured out uh, to my knowledge that they actually haven't bought Blue Point as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, Sony's bought Housemark. Uh, I think I think it's good. It's good for them. Um, yeah. I think I think but, Housemark needs a comeback story from Returnal because that was supposed to be a big one, and it really didn't come off the way they wanted it to. Yeah, no, I, I get what they were going for with it yeah. and what it sounded like. Yeah. But they also had that extra layer of, you know, of whatever demand on it or mm -hmm. whatever because it was going to be one of the first, you know, yep. PS5-ass PS5 games. Yep. And... From what I hear, it it worked out fine enough, but the uh, the roguelite elements in it were, uh, or the roguelike elements that is, uh, were just a little too random and unbalanced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they and, were, and it kind of ruined everything. I don't know. I didn't get a chance to play it. I would have uh, liked to, but call out to Adam Sessler before G four. Well, and soon to be on G4, he does a review of Returnal that is hilarious and amazing, uh, and I, he nails it. I, I have never played Returnal, so I obviously, uh, but uh, you know, it just it failed on some very basic roguelike elements that need to be there that like Hades got right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like it's just just missed the ball on some things. Um, okay, so is that your only one? Should I go into them? Uh, yeah, go ahead. All right, I descend into madness, sir. Uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start with the crappy one first, uh, because it is heavily rumored right now that Xbox is trying to get Kojima. Oh yeah, I saw yeah, that. It's a big de it's a big deal. It's going around the internet. Xbox is trying to pull Kojima in, and uh, whew, man, I. And I don't like Kojima. We've talked about this. Yeah. He's, I, I, he's the most overrated developer in the history of video games. Uh, on a whole. Like, I can't think of somebody more overrated in video games than Hideo Kojima. Uh, and he doesn't even produce that much. Guys, like, he really doesn't. Like, you wait years and years and years for him to come out with weird-ass weird games. And then when they come out, they're not that good. <laughs> Like, they're always controversial. They're never, like, all the way across good games, you know? Yeah, I heard, too, that in response to this, a lot of uh, PlayStation fans have started a petition to stop, <laughs> to stop the rumored uh, luring of Kojima over to Xbox. Well, and what exactly are we luring at this point? Like... I mean, do we really think that Kojima's going to go uh, exclusive to Xbox? That, like, is that a possibility? Like, I don't think it is. I think he just wants to... <laughs> I mean, I think Xbox wants his games. I think Xbox wants uh, uh, a head. 
and they want they want to say you can play Hideo Kojima games on PlayStation or Xbox. That's what they want. Uh, but Hideo is he even making games anymore, man? Dude is out in space, and he, he uh, we've heard multiple times that he wants to make movies, and then we heard that he wants to make games differently, and then he wants to make small games, and then he wants to make big games. I feel like every three months we hear something completely different from him. Yeah, I don't know exactly what it is that they want in regard to that. I mean, it's weird enough as it is that he he decided to leave Konami uh-huh. and then locked himself in to some degree with Sony and now but he's like not really locked in because Sony put money into the development of Death Stranding. So now Microsoft wants him. I, I don't. It, it's a weird series of steps. Yeah. Honestly, if I was him, if I'm gonna leave one studio to make my own studio, I wouldn't lock myself down to one particular platform for any reason. Right. But I don't know. I, I don't, don't know if this even would happen. I mean, I, I'm sure Xbox would love to get him exclusive, but I don't think that's what it's about. I think Xbox wants to get it so that he will make games for both consoles. You know, that's what I, that's what I think. And I don't even think they want... I don't even think they necessarily care about his next game. I think they care about him saying that his next game will be on all consoles. You know what I mean? Because yeah. that's what it's all about with Hideo, is the hype. It's all about the hype with Hideo. Um, my next one... Dan Hauser, uh, just so that anybody who's not super into the gaming space, he is kind of, um, I don't know if I'd say a living legend, but he's approaching that as far as developers go. He's one of the Hauser brothers uh, who basically have made Rockstar the company they are today. He's been around for almost all the GTAs. Uh, and the Red Dead Redemptions and all of them. Uh, he was the C- he was like I think they were like co CEO or something of that company. The Hauser brothers were. I think so yeah. He left Rockstar last year. We actually talked about that a little bit. Um, it has been noticed that he is attached to a game development studio that just got started in the UK, uh, and they have put him down as a director. Uh, so it's not 100% confirmed, but it looks like he has moved to a different company. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it could have had something to do with... Uh, the way he feels about the company maybe just in general you know it could be could be the direction of the company i mean in fairness rockstar doesn't make a lot of games guys like they're great games that come out they're very detailed games uh but they make like a game every 10 years right so like i think i think part of this is maybe he just wants to make games again you know, and he can't do that at Rockstar because Rockstar is either Red Dead Redemption or it's GTA, and that's that. You know, pretty much, yeah. unless they decide to bring Bully back. But oh, please bring Bully back! I think that's like one of the most requested Rockstar games out there. I don't know. I feel like I don't know. I feel like in this day and age, with just the state of society, I feel like it. Outlaw just... tennis. <laughs> so what? And nothing I was making. Oh, it, Outlaw it, it, Tennis? That's where you I, were going with that? <laughs> Outlaw Tennis. Wait, Rockstar did Outlaw Tennis? It was like Outlaw Table Tennis or something, I think. And it was uh, like I badass they, they, playing it or something. It was ridiculous. They had, they had Outlaw Golf. I know. Mm-hmm. They had all the Outlaw games, I think. And yeah. It was always like a bunch of people swearing and giving the middle fingers while playing a very, like, <laughs> a very mannerly sport. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. Where were you going with that? Uh, no, I was just saying just like in this day and age, uh, I don't know as if Bully is a game that would really thrive the way that it did back in what was it, early 2000s. I don't know. I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I don't yeah, know. Then I mean, for yeah, for a game, it's good. But like, I feel like it's one of those things just like in the social sphere. 
Like, I mean, in fairness, I don't know how GTA survives in the social sphere that we're in. You know, like, I, well, I was actually just about to to mention with that. I think it's one of those things because it's been around so long. Everybody said what they had to say about it, and it's such right. a persistent thing. It's just like one of those things. Like, well, you just have to deal with it. Exists, like, you know, right, right. We we just shun it in the corner where bully came out for a while and it did have that hubbub around it about like, wow, you're, you're torturing people and, you know, making people's lives miserable, this, that, and the other game, the other thing. And it just kind of came and went. I, I think that it's still a game. It's still just a game, no matter what it is. There's, there's a way to do those things in a game and still make them gamey and quote unquote, tasteful right. to a, a level to where it's like yes it's a game it's not being like overtly perverse or you know crazy brutal or anything like uh, I that mean, but at bully the same wasn't, time we have yeah bully wasn't that bad though i mean he just kissed girls and beat up other kids but they never like nobody dies in it or anything yeah know? well i was a bit just about to say too it's like we have that but then on the other hand we have stuff like doom and right, right. mortal combat that is just exponentially from where they started just got worse and worse and worse yeah yeah like yeah. for well quote worse you know right and nobody has a problem with those right yeah yeah um okay so my next one is uh the magic legends uh the game uh yes. has ceased it will it will not release it went into beta, and uh, they are canning it. They're canning it uh, already. And they are refunding all the purchase prices for anybody who bought it in its beta form, and they're allowing them to continue to play it until such time as it goes offline, which will be, I think, September? September or October, I don't know. Uh, and they basically said, we're really sorry, we've learned a lot from it, and this just isn't the direction we want to go in, which is weird. It's really weird because if you look at the, like, once I heard this story, I was like, did it do that bad? And uh, I looked at the reviews and stuff, and it it was like a six or a seven, like, on all the places. Basically, what they had said was like, there's microtransactions in it. They suck. Uh, Other than that, it's an okay game that gets a little bland after a while. Like, that's what it was. So, like... Why it's just like, nope, mm, fuck it. Uh, I don't know. I, I think it's actually kind of like a really weird decision on their part. From what I understand, too, they had player base. I, I could be mistaken on that, though. I could be mistaken on that point. I is just a, felt like this came out of nowhere. Is it like a, a collectible electronic? No, 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 no. Or is it like an actual like, game game? Yeah, it's like it's like a Diablo type game. Huh. Yeah, yeah, it was their, like, one foyer, foyer into that. It's like Magic was, like, because Magic is almost always cards right. uh, or card-type things. Legends was, like, their one, like, okay, this is an action RPG game. Um, And for whatever reason, they're like, nope, it just didn't work for us, so that we're out. And I just thought that was that's extremely strange, even stranger still that they're giving all the beta money back for a game that I think anybody playing it would probably say was worse the price of a mission, you know? Yeah. It's very strange. For like a 7, like I get it. It's not like this was a cyberpunk, you know? So like I don't I don't know, it's very strange, but they are they're not going to full release it and they're going to refund all the people who purchased it for beta, which is cool. I think that's really cool. I just I think it's strange, especially given this day and age in gaming period, you know? Yeah. Uh, so that brings me to my last one. I'm super excited about this one. We had one final stream for Monster Hunter Stories 2, Wings of Ruin. Uh, and man, are they doing it up for that game. Uh, so number one, we're going to get uh, DLC, free DLC for it, two uh, a month, starting with its release, all the way up until October. And, and each one's going to be new monsters or new quests for you to do. Uh, which, that's hella cool to me. <laughs> like, hella cool to me. And then, Neil, you got to try this demo, buddy. You got to try it because I want you to get into this because they streamed 
what the co-op is going to look like for Monster Hunter Stories 2, and it is one of the coolest co-ops I think I've ever seen. Um, so, like, the way it'll work is, like, you can explore the... the Because, it, it, like, you move through an open world, kind of like Pokemon, you know? Uh, and then you meet monsters, you fight them, and then you can also go into their dens and try and collect eggs, which is how you get your your pet monsties, you know? Yeah. Um, but when co-op, like, you would, you would just jump into my game with your monster, and you explore the area completely independently of me. So... If you if I start a fight, I'm in that fight. But if I'm mid fight, you can literally walk over, see me fighting, run into the fight, and then it'll work you into the turns. Huh. Which I've never seen anything like that for turn based. So you can be independent, you can work together, you can just explore it simultaneously side by side. I thought that was so cool. I loved like I was kind of I was kind of thrown for a loop when he uh uh um when he like he saw his friend fighting and then he walked over and ran into them and then it just like it moved him into the battle into the order basically just dropped him into the order wherever i i thought that was really cool i i didn't even think you could do that with turn based you know yeah i think that's very interesting and something that I've always like kind of like half thought about like oh mm-hmm. wow wouldn't it be really cool if you could have like something along those lines like I, I, uh, even like with Final Fantasy I know yeah. they have like their online thing but like I don't know that would be really cool That would be really cool for games of service too like I know you don't like games of service as a whole but how cool would it be to like have your party and other people's parties running around in the same space, but it's all turn-based instead of weird twitch. Like, that would also cut down on griefing, you know? Yeah. Like, somebody just hunting you down and sniping you if it's if it's tactically turn-based. Like, that, that would be really cool. I think that it opens up kind of a world of gaming. It's very innovative in a, in a small way, you know? Uh, yeah. But, but you got to try the demo, man. You got to try the demo, see if you like it, so that you can get it, so that we can play it together. Because... I know Phil ain't going to get that one on Switch. <laughs> I mean, if he gets it, he'll get it on PC. He hates Switch. So uh, I definitely not going to be playing that one with him. Um, and then I'm going to add one, even though that was four. Uh, and it, it was recent, uh, like right before we went online. There is... So we've talked about this game a little bit on here. And I can do this because we're still kind of early. Um, yeah. There's this game called Sifu. Uh, Neil, you and I have talked about it. I, I know we've talked about it at least yeah. here and there on the uh, on the show. Uh, it's from the people who made uh, Absolver. It's a 3D brawler, martial arts fighter sort of thing uh, that yeah. I'm super excited for. You know I'm super excited for that. Um, and uh, they, like, go to their Twitter and look at the gameplay chunks that they've been uploading. They've been uploading just small gameplay chunks of the the character having fights um in the game there is this scene and i i tried to link it in discord and it didn't really work but where one they're he's fighting two guys he knocks one of them down then he grabs the other guy and he like kind of pushes him off balance and throws him and the guy stumbles over the other guy like he's an obstacle I, man, I've never seen that in a fighting game. You know what I mean? Like, I've never seen, like, a person as an obstacle in that way, you know? Yeah. Like, that's just, like, the most animation I've ever seen is, like, your character hopping over a dead body or a person who's down. You know, I've never seen it where, like, one of them, if they're going too fast, trips over them. It, it, it just looks so good. I love that. I, that's just so innovative to me, especially depending on how they work it into the game, you know? Cool. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm going to do one more because that's, oh. that's how crazy I am. That's that's oh, six. Wow. That's six. And this one, I don't know how this one wasn't on my odds and ends, but it's probably because I posted about it so much on Discord after I did it. But uh, mark your fucking calendars, everybody. July uh, 15th, yeah. 
DLC for Streets of Rage 4. DLC for Streets of Rage 4. Mr. X's Nightmare. I have been talking about it for weeks and months and forever. It is finally coming out. They released one final trailer where they showed survival mode gameplay and they gave us a release date. And it is this month and it is in two weeks. And you better believe I'm streaming that shit. I'm streaming that shit until I pass out on my desk, Neil. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> I cannot wait to play that game. Cannot wait, guys. July 15th, I will be streaming it live 100%. It's, and, and what's even better, the one thing I was worried about is that they were going to charge us for it. It's free in Games Pass. Oh. Yeah. So we don't have Very to spend, nice. spend any money to get it. It's free in Games Pass. Yeah. I thought it was really awesome. I'm really excited about it. Really excited about it. So, all right. I'm officially done with odds and ends now. Like. <laughs> Official, official. Do you want to wrap this thing up a little bit early? Oh, what if I have another odd and end? Do you? I mean, kind of ish. Meow, meow, just... meow. <laughs> um, what? So... Three, three secret odds and ends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so uh, Doom Eternal was supposed to get uh, a special mode called Invasion. They showed it off a oh, little bit when they first, I saw this. Yeah. when they first showed off the game. Uh, it was supposed to be where you could sign into this mode and pick a demon and jump into somebody's campaign as that demon. So it would right. be like a somewhat multiplayer-ish sort of deal. Um, unfortunately, due to a multitude of reasons that they gave, uh, it's not shaking out and it will not be in the final game, which is kind of a bummer. However, they will have an endless horde mode. Kill till you die. So that's going to be very interesting. And that's something that I definitely am about because the challenge gates within the game, I went through every single challenge gate. And I'll tell you, nothing clenched my asshole and got my <laughs> blood pumping more than those. So one that is endless is going to be great. Okay. I, I will say it is a bummer because Invasion was innovative. While, while in Endless Horde mode, every game's got one. You know, right. so it, it kind of sucks to trade in something that might have been truly, truly interesting in the zeitgeist for something that eh, is a dime a dozen. But I, I understand why you would be more excited for an endless horde mode than an invasion mode. But invasion just sounded so interesting that it did. I, I was to see super. It. I was super hyped about it when they showed it off. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So it's it is kind of a bummer. It is kind of a bummer. All right. Do we have any more secret odds and ends? I should we go to I plugs? don't. I don't think <laughs> I can. I don't think I can come up with one. <laughs> All right. All right. Horrible gaming podcast. That brings us to the end of the show and the selfless, same self. Uh, the shameless. Yes, 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 yeah. It's one of my. I'm guys. having one of a my stroke. Name. <laughs> I'm having a stroke. a stroke. You ever see those commercials? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it brings you to the end of the show and the shameless self-promotion that comes with it. Neil, would you like to plug anything specific? Yeah. So okay. we literally... We're we're at the end of Halo Three mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. uh, Halo Infinite Road. Mm -hmm. We literally have to film the final mission uh -huh. in that game which i just learned in our last recording session that you've not even finished this nope. so not this is going to be a little bit interesting and then from there we go into halo 3 odst which uh halo 3 odst is one of the few halo games that i have not played i i well i played maybe two hours of it yeah yeah. So that'll be interesting. Well, we'll uh, probably take a week or two off in between, well, guys, yeah, because but... Neil's schedule sucks. So we're going to probably take a few weeks off there just so that everybody knows. But, yeah, it'll be two weeks. If all goes to plan, it'll be two weeks will be the finale of Season 3. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, uh, on my side, I have a couple of special things to promote. Number one... 
my brother is back again with some new music and I have made a new music video for it uh, without the moon the titular track for his second album uh, will be debut well, I'm sorry has debuted if you're listening to this it will be on, it went on the channel on Saturday you can check it out on the channel I please urge you to I think it is possibly his best song ever and I liked a lot of his songs in the first album but I think this one is just the best right now uh so go check it out and i actually did the video to warframe uh and it's all footage that i uh collected from streaming uh so, <laughs> streaming to collect footage which was a lot of fun so uh please check that out uh the other thing i would like to specially plug is our next episode if you're keeping track of the count is our 100th episode 100 we are bad at planning we don't have anything truly big, <laughs> truly big or crazy planned. I am trying to put together some people to do like a retrospective uh, on the channel. We're probably not going to do news next week. We're probably just going to talk about OMG as a whole and the fact that we've basically been doing this almost two years now and uh, just our ups and downs and stuff like that. I think it'll be a lot of fun just to like reminisce a little bit. So uh, that's probably what the next channel, the next show is going to be. And then the week after that, I don't know. We might take a day. We might take a week off for fuck's sake. We've never actually taken a week off. We've missed podcasts, but we still recorded it. I just failed to record something on it. We've never actually taken a week off. So we might. Uh, in any case, that, those those episodes aren't lost. They're for they're for paid paid subscribers someday. No, no they are. We don't they have aren't? them. They are do not sure? exist. Yes. Are yes. you sure? Yes, I'm positive. I'm positive, Neil. I'm Could positive. I be held legally liable if I say <laughs> that they exist and they don't? I th I think you could. I'm not 100% positive, but I think you could. They do not I mean, exist. You giving this is us all money. Speculation. You giving us this money will not make <laughs> episodes appear that were fucked up. Like it's that simple. And and trust me, I need content for the channel. I'm a 40-year-old man who's a full-time dad who has a part-time job who like and we are all older people with like Neil and Phil both have full-time jobs and are old guys with families. We need content. If I had, if the content was not fucked up, it would be on the channel, like one hundred percent. This is completely random. Whatever happened to there was? It was almost a year ago or so at this point. Whatever happened to? I came over and we just were like recorded like four different random games. I know one of them. The capture got screwed up on it. Yeah, yeah it did. Uh, but, can I be like, honest with you? They, they sucked. They did? They, uh, they did. Like, and I, I've been putting off telling you this, because I remember that day, and I remember the games we play, and I had fun playing them with you, but the actual, like, when you, like, it was just one of those that we just, I don't know, we weren't jiving that well, the game wasn't that interesting, like, it just, we just weren't, it wasn't good. It was not good, so they didn't make it on and and if i'm telling you it's not good like i said we need content so it it, it wasn't good like they just weren't that entertaining I, I hate to say it the one that was entertaining was the street fighter one and we lost that because of the capture yeah i remember that one yeah. i remember that was i remember you telling me that that one uh wasn't too good yeah yeah but the, then the, I think the only one I really could have saved was the the bubbly one where you like collect people, and and it just uh, it, yeah. it it was fun in the moment, but it it didn't really translate when you were putting it in a show. I, it's hard for me to describe, but it just didn't it didn't work that well. I'm definitely not going to make people paid for it. <laughs> That's what you were. Getting Are you to. sure? <laughs> one day I'll make them pay for T-shirts. That's that's my goal. If we could just get if we get 500 subscribers, I will invest in merchandise. I'll, I'll make that claim right now. If we get 500 subscribers, I will invest in merchandise. Merchandise. That's 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 how I'm gonna roll that one. And 500 subscribers is only 225 more. So there you go. That's true. We're over halfway there. <laughs> 
All right, everybody. You guys can talk to us on Facebook at Old Man Gaming DH on Twitter at Old Man Gaming Nine. You can join our Discord. Links in the description below. You can influence us and all of our programs from there. And as usual, guys, like us or hate us, as long as you keep watching and listening, we will keep making them. We'll see you guys next week. Classes ended, and they were trying to get me to schedule summer classes. I'm like, yo, guys, I literally <laughs> just bought a house. I limped through this semester for multiple reasons, one of them being that my landlord was selling our house, which, by the way, by the way, he's... <laughs> He's knocked twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, off the house, there it and is. And nobody wants it still. <laughs> of course, that house is worth twenty thousand dollars. Period. Yeah, it's sitting at sixty right now. I think. Nope. Nope. Yeah, nope. there's no way we we saw that the other day because the first time they the price it is down, wrong, Bob. It's right. uh, it's twenty thousand, man. <laughs> twenty thousand tops. Maybe thirty. No, twenty. It's twenty. I've been in your. I've been in that house, man. It's a shithole. Now that you've moved out, I can fully insult that place. That place was a shithole, man. Oh no, you could have insulted it before. We didn't know that <laughs> fucking thing. I know you didn't, but still, you don't want to go into somebody's house and be like, "You live here." <laughs> like, your you house. Know? Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> like, they, wow, this is like. I've seen trailers better than this shit. And it's not it's not because of you guys, it's because the house is falling apart, man. That thing is worth twenty thousand tops, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Oh yeah. <laughs>